The simplest of all polytopes is the simplex. In one dimension, it is formed by extending one point to another. Connecting this point to a perpendicular point yields a triangle, the two-dimensional simplex. Adding a fourth point outside the triangle forms the simplex of three dimensions, which is a tetrahedron. Notice that the tetrahedron is bounded by triangles, which in turn are bounded by edges. These are all simplexes. Another perpendicular point added to this polytope will create the four-dimensional simplex. Here, this point is projected down to the interior of the object. The four-dimensional simplex is bounded by four tetrahedrons. As the polytope rotates, each tetrahedron will alternately enclose the others as the four-dimensional object displays its different boundaries. Thus, the four-dimensional object appears to turn inside out and change colors as different faces rotate in front of others. Traveling through the polytope shows the many overlapping layers caused by the projection to the two-dimensional screen. This simplex is composed of points, edges, triangles, and tetrahedrons, all uniquely connected to form a convex polytope of four dimensions. The cross polytope is related to the simplex, but it is a more complex object. It is initially formed by extending a point in two opposite directions. Doing so again from the middle will create a square, which is a two-dimensional cross. Extending outward from the square will form a cross of three dimensions, which is normally called an octahedron. Here the relation to simplexes can easily be seen. The cross is just two tetrahedrons joined at a base. The four-dimensional cross has two more vertices connected from opposing directions, which are now located in the center of the polytope due to the projection. As the object rotates, the complexities of the interconnections between these new vertices can be seen. This four-dimensional cross is built with 32 tetrahedrons, which form octahedrons in various ways throughout its perimeter. The most familiar of all polytopes is the measure. Translating a point in one direction will form a line. This line will trace out a square when moved in a perpendicular direction. This is a two-dimensional measure. Extending the square will form another measure, the cube. This polytope, bounded by squares and edges, is the three-dimensional measure. As the cube is translated into the fourth dimension, it forms a hypercube or tesseract. This measure is bounded by eight cubes, the inner and outer cubes, and the intermediates, which are distorted by the projection. One of the more interesting properties of four-dimensional objects is their ability to rotate about two axes simultaneously. Here, the measure is rotating about a single axis. Now, another separate axial rotation has been added. As the measure continues rotating, it should be noted that this polytope, along with the simplex and cross, exists in every dimension and is only one member of an infinite class of geometrical objects known as regular convex polytopes. <laughs>